Hello and welcome to Mofo RC. Today we're going to attempt to do a programming video for the Nano. Or, no, 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 sorry about that. The Rock Wolf ESC and Nano Bam combo, or any of the other motors as shown here or elsewhere, you could try to run or run on the Rock Wolf ESC. Uh, we have a couple ESCs laying out here today for ease of switching over and showing you different things. Uh, and you are looking at my computer screen at the moment, which has a few things pulled up on it to reference to. So first, obviously you would go here and you would buy one of these things here or just buy the ESC by itself. Or up here is uh, just the ESC. Here is the configuration tool and firmwares. Now, when you purchase the ESC from the website, it will automatically send you a link to download these. Um, it'll go into your email box, the same email box that you use when you purchase the ESC or motor or whatever it was you purchased that came with the Rockwolf ESC. This ESC is brushed or brushed less. Um, <clears throat> It comes preloaded with brushless as the firmware for your uh, motor operation, and it is preset to the Nano Bam motor, um, which is a 3200 kV motor and a uh, 12 pole, 12 pole count 3200 kV motor uh, pre-programmed. I'm sorry about this camera; it just will not freaking focus here. So everything you're going to look at is going to be kind of blurry on this little camera here. But pre-programmed for this. So what you would first do when you get your package, if you have this variant of motor or any other variant of motor that is a 12 pole and roughly 3200 kV, uh, all you would have to do, depending on your receiver you're using, this is a stock... Um, axial ESC with built-in receiver. Here's the remote for it. I will be using this today for the purposes of this video. Um, all you would have to do essentially if you purchase the combo or if you purchase the ESC and you have a motor roughly the same specs as that one is take your ESC or receiver you are using plug it into the port labeled channel 2 with the little yellow signal wire or pointing towards the one that says signal on your ESC or receiver that you already have. Plug that into there. You're going to take a fully charged battery. Uh, this one happens to be a MoFo RC 600 milliamp 2S. Uh, you will plug that into there. I guess you could plug the motor in first to the motor port. There is an on-off button right here underneath your uh, signal wire coming out of here. So you're going to plug your battery in, make sure you turn on your remote first, which I'm going to do now. Plug in the battery, we hear a little dee 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 and some other little beeping noises. Um, and it just works already. Works forward, works reverse, has very slow modulation. Um, that is pre-programmed right out of the box. Uh, if you don't want to mess with anything else, you can try it on the other motors and see how well it works, which we'll do right now. This would probably be the least like a NanoBam motor. This is your Furitech Komodo motor here. Uh, this is only like a 1400 kV motor, I believe, and it is a probably a 14 pole if I had to guess. And we plug it in, it's got very slow modulation, we give it some throttle, and it goes full speed. So, realistically, you probably don't even need to change anything, but it could cause slowly developing issues, who knows. Um, so if you do need to change that, let's say you go to this Komodo motor, you install, uh, you've already got the motor installed or whatever, and you just want to mess with some settings. Uh, you feel like, you know, I just want to mess with stuff. Uh, I don't like the fact that it already works. I just want to mess with things. So you go into your email and you find the folder that is 
labeled ESC config tool underscore one underscore eight two underscore win and it probably won't have the one up to the end of it. Click on that, double click it, open it up, and the first thing you need to do is go over here to where it says extract all. Uh, if you do not extract all, you will never get anything to work. So you would click extract all, select your destination to send the extracted all files to, and hit extract. Uh, then it does its thing, it extracts them, and it sends you to this thing here. Um, which I have done here is I've taken all these files <clears throat> and I've moved them into a convenient folder that I put on the desktop labeled ESC, oh wait, hold on here, it is right here. Config tool is what I've labeled this folder. And when you open this folder, it has all the same stuff that I just showed you from that folder in it. Um, however, it's a convenient little handy folder that I've put right here on my desktop so I can open it up whenever I need to. So after you've extracted them, um, you would go to <clears throat> the very bottom in my case, probably maybe your case too, where it says serial port connector. You will double click that and open it. Then you will see this little pop up here. Um, the one thing you will need that is not included with the ESC is a decent USB C cable. Uh, so this plugs in, this is a regular USB port. This is a USB C port, which is the kind of little round looking one like that, or oval or whatever you call that. You will need to plug that into your computer. You will need a computer as well. Um, and so far as I know, it will only work with a Windows computer and probably not like a Chromebook. It has to be a real computer and probably a Windows PC of some sort or laptop. You will plug the one end into your computer, the other end will plug into this little nifty nifty tool that comes with your ESC. And you can see we've got a red light there. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. There it is, There's a little red light on there noting me that this is plugged in. Then you will unplug this if you've already plugged it in to there. You'll unplug that. I've still got my motor connected, I've still got my battery plugged in. You will need to leave your battery plugged in. While I'm looking at this, you can see my hump up here, I'm going to call this the top side and here is my little connector for the Rockwolf ESC I'm gonna plug this in and in my case and probably everybody's case I would imagine um, I'm looking at this and the yellow wire as I'm holding this connector here thing with the USB connector here the top of it the big humpy spot here not the digitally looking sideboard thing here the top of it with a hump I'm gonna plug this connector into with the yellow wire, the signal wire, pointing towards me if I'm holding it in my left hand and holding the programmer in my right hand. I will plug that into there, just like so. If you can see that, maybe you can, maybe it's a little blurry, there we go. So that is now plugged in and we are ready to try to do something. So if I go over here, uh, and everything does have to be plugged in, so the motor doesn't have to be plugged in, but you do need that connector plugged into this, this plugged into that, that plugged into your computer, and this connected to a fully charged battery um, in which you can use to power it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this little multi ESC config tool 1.82. Next. I am going to go ahead and click this little direct connect box. I don't know if you need to or not, but I'm going to click it. Mine is plugged into COM3. That may say COM1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Whatever port you plug that into in your computer is what it's going to say. Uh, mine happens to say COM3. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click connect. Now it's going to say connected to COM3 in a bunch of numbers. Up here at the top, it says M1, connect and read settings. I'm going to click on M1. Now we wait while it connects. M1 connected, settings, read, OK. And here's all your settings. Now, if you're all hooked up and you hit the throttle and your rig is going backwards, you will come in here and click reverse rotation and then click save. And now it will spin the other direction and your rig will go forward when you hit forward. 
if you don't need to do that, just leave it unchecked, hit save again. All these little settings here, um, I would suggest going and just kind of looking it up on forums to see which ones are what for things you need to do or things you want to do. Or what uh, the other thing I would recommend to do, probably fairly important, use your camera enabled smartphone and take a picture of this box the way it sets right from me. As soon as you get this thing and you open it up, just go ahead and take a picture of this. Uh, then you have all these settings so you know just in case as you're moving things around and changing stuff um, you will know the starting figure of which you started at um, so if you wanted to change things like we're going to do right now we're going to pull this little bar down to 14 ish hundred and it may be kind of hard to get to exactly 1400 so we're going to call it 1460 and we're going to change this to 12 to 14. Um, that should be the correct actual settings for this Komodo full-size motor. I believe that is the correct settings. Uh, and that's probably all we're going to need to do to change to that. Now, the other things you can mess with and, you know, fine-tune your ESC for your motor as you go. But like I said, refer back to that picture you took and only change one thing at a time and only change it a little at a time. So if you wanted to change your, um, I don't know, let's say sign startup range right here. And let's say it started at 15 and you wanted to go to like 25, right? Uh, probably don't. Probably go to like 17 or 18 or 19 and then hit your little save settings button. Then hit your close connection, disconnect it all, plug it back into your ESC or your receiver, whatever you're using, and then try it. And if it works a little better, great. And if it works kind of roughly the same, you know, whatever, you can leave it that way or you can change it back. Uh, or you can go the other direction with that and see what that does differently. And you can kind of keep moving it a little by little um, to get to the point where you feel like it works best for you. Now, I totally forgot what I was going, to, going with this, but let's say we got all this hooked up, we got it plugged in. Um, we've changed the pole count and the motor KV. We're going to hit save settings. So now we should be set up specifically for this motor. Um, now the one thing that is pretty important that you are going to want to do when you get your ESC, go over here to this little input button. And on here you will see this right here says low voltage cutoff. You're going to turn that on. That is um, for using LiPo batteries. If you do not turn that on, you will run your LiPo battery out. Uh, and if your LiPo battery runs out, you likely will not be able to recharge the LiPo battery. So very important. First thing you're going to need to change here specifically as a requirement is turning on this low voltage cutoff. And it is set at 300, which means 3 volts. Um, just pretend those other two zeros there don't count, I suppose. Um, and it, now if you want to change it to like a more normal setting, you don't want to run your LiPo too low all the time. You would change it to 340 or so. That would be 3.4 volts. And what it is talking about is the cell voltage per cell minimum. So in this two cell battery, there is two cells. Um, each one, uh, when fully charged, is at like 4.2-ish, we'll say. So at 4.2-ish is when a fully charged 2-cell LiPo per cell um, gets you to that 8.4-ish voltage after a full charge between the two cells added together. So one cell each on this 2S battery. Here's a 3S battery. This will have three cells. Now, it's same concept, though. The minimum cell voltage you're going to want to change to probably something else other than 3 because most chargers won't recharge a LiPo uh, at 3 volts per cell, which would be six volts fully charged, you know, on a battery. So when you change this to 3.4 or 3.25 volts or 3.3 or 3.5, um, you're going to change that to whatever your setting you feel is proper for your battery. Uh, now there's an argument to be made that the higher the voltage here, so if we went to 3.5, 350 which is 3.5 volts 
could potentially make your lipo battery last longer. Uh, the other thing to be said about that, though, is um, you're going to run out of charge faster, which over the lifespan of your battery means you're going to charge it more times, which means it might not potentially make it last longer. Uh, you know, to use your own discretion on that one, though, maybe Google it, see what everybody else has been using for LiPo low voltage cutoff settings. Pick what you're going to pick. I'm going to go with 3.3 here. Then I'm going to hit save again. So we now have a low voltage cutoff of 3.3 volts, even though it says 330. That is 3.3 volts. Uh, there's some set, ser, uh, servo settings here. Um, if you don't know what these are, look them up online. I'm not going to try to explain all those things here. We are just doing a simple kind of settings change here and troubleshooting. Uh, this flash option here is where you would go to change to a different firmware to go from either brushed or brushless. We will show you that in just a minute. So here we're set Komodo settings pretty much here. Not micro Komodo, not mini Komodo. We went from what the ESC was loaded with, which was set for MoFo RC NanoBand motor, to now changed to the settings on this Komodo motor. Uh, we hit save already. I'm going to hit save again just in case. I'll hit three, four times. And we're going to hit close connection. We have now disconnected the connection from these two. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. I'm going to plug it into here after I turn my radio back on. Plug it into the right direction and orientation. And we have our motor turn on. It goes delete, delete. And we hit the throttle again. And it looks virtually the exact same as it did before. So we have changed it to Komodo settings. Now, let's say you wanted to change it to something a little faster. <clears throat> now, this is not much faster, but it is a little bit different. Uh, the motor itself, when properly set up on a transmission, will be faster because the gear that comes on the ROP motor, the Revenge of Pancake, the gear that comes on here is larger than the gear that comes on a NanoBam. A NanoBam comes with an 11 tooth gear normally. This comes with either an 18 or a 20 tooth gear. So that in itself already speeds up the whole drivetrain and speed of your rig. So let's change the settings to that ROP motor. So we're going to unplug this again, you know, obviously power it off first and do all the important things you're supposed to do. Plug it back into here. In the same orientation I told you earlier, if you're looking at the big humpy spot here, yellow wire going to face you when you plug it in. Okay, that is plugged in. We're going to go back over here. Direct connect is already clicked. COM3 is already there. We're going to hit connect. It says connected. I'm going to click M1 and wait for it to connect. If you don't have a battery plugged in, it will not connect. If your power button is off and you don't have a red light on the ESC, it also will not connect. You must have the power button on. You must have a fully charged LiPo connected to it and it will connect. Now we're going to change this here to 3400 ish RPM. And this is a 14 pole motor so we're going to leave that at 14 because we were on Komodo if you were not on Komodo and you had it set up NanoBam it would say 12 and we would go back to 14 and hit save and now we are ready to run the ROP motor so we're going to hit close connection it is closed we're going to unplug it again plug it back into this little thingamajibby here we hear the little deedleedles and Oh, wait, hold on. I need to plug the motor in. We have the wrong motor plugged in. Okie doke. So now we are connected to the Revenge of Pancake motor. And we give it a little bit of gas and it starts moving. We give it a little bit less gas and it goes a little bit slower. More gas goes a little faster. All the way to high speed takeoff. Now don't ever do what I'm doing right now. Don't ever hold your motor by these little wires and throttle it like this. And especially don't hold it like way up here at the top somewhere and hit the throttle. Because if you hit the throttle real hard, it's going to just send this thing to Jesus somewhere. And uh, the wires are going to wrap up and you're probably going to yank one of these little tiny wires out from the inside in here. 
and then you're going to post online about how terrible this motor is because you just ripped one of the wires out of it and it no longer works and it just jitters back and forth when you hit the gas instead of turning in a circular direction as so noted here. So don't ever actually just hold it like this and do this. I am doing this for reference purposes only right now. Uh, next, let's see here. Um, what else could we show you? Let's go ahead and change the firmware to brushed. Now, I have another ESC right here. Let's do it to that one. We'll leave this one set up as brushless. We will change this one right here to brushed. So what we're going to do is go ahead and completely disconnect all this stuff. Because i got so much stuff laying over here, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Just unplug all these little things. Set that over there somewhere. What we will need for this is a brush motor. Oh, look, this already has an ESC connected to it. We'll just unplug that for now. Um, let's go ahead and take your ESC. Pretend this is fully loaded out of the box with your brushless firmware as it comes from MofoRC. And you've got this thing here and you're going to connect it to a brushed motor, not brushless. So we're going to take this little thing here and we're going to plug this connector in just like we talked about earlier. Got the yellow wire pointing at me. This thing is facing up with the hump here. Plug that in. Very important, we are going to plug in a battery. And ensure your little red light comes on. This one does. You can kind of see the reflection on the table there as I'm winging it back and forth. That is plugged in, that is plugged in, it is here and there and everywhere. Now we're going to go here, direct connect, my COM is COM3 once again. If it says select port, you need to select it, COM3 and connect. Connect and read settings, M1. Uh, here we have this one, looks kind of like it was set up for something or another here. Let's go to flash. This is the part of the tabs here that will allow you to change the firmware. Now, what you have also from MofoRC when you purchase the motor, in that email you would have also downloaded a couple of things that say something like this. Mofo brushed firmware and Mofo brushless firmware. Now, if you get the thing and... Uh, it's brand new, you just got it. You don't need to load this brushless firmware. Leave that alone, you do not need that unless you're changing back to brushless. So if you're going to change to brushed, however, you will need that firmware. It will be in your downloads folder somewhere here. And you will search in there until you find the one that says brushed firmware. So yet again, let's start that one more time because maybe this got too confusing for everybody. We are connected, we are in settings, we're going to go to flash. Then we're going to go to load firmware. And it's going to pull up a bunch of stuff. I have mine in my desktop. And it is right here in a folder that I specifically labeled ESC firmware. I'm going to double click that and right here we have the brushed firmware. Double click that. It is now loaded onto here. Now I will hit flash firmware. Uh, if you don't, load the firmware first and you hit flash firmware it potentially could brick your ESC so do not just hit that button without loading something I'm gonna hit load it says connected and you see a little green progress bar going across the screen uh, there's also a little blue light flashing on this thing now noting that it is doing something now we wait And you keep waiting. Just hang out, wait till that is all the way there. Don't unplug anything. Don't turn your computer off. Don't do anything like pour water on it. Right here you can see it says flash success. So that means we have now flashed it with a different version of firmware. In this case, the brushed firmware. If you go back here, everything still looks the same. Nothing here has changed. All this stuff is the same. However, it is now brushed, even though it still shows all this stuff the same. Now, uh, as far as tuning this, 
you can go through and do the same thing we were talking about earlier. You can move all these little knobs and buttons around and see what works best. However, take a picture of it beforehand, just the way it was set, and go back and change each little thing. Is simul, you know, one little spot at a time, just a little bit, um, so as to not just overdo things to where you don't know what you're doing or what's happening. Uh, we'll do a later video of actually tuning a brush motor, but for the sake of this video not being any longer than it needs to be, we are just going to leave it at this. We're not going to touch any of these settings over here. Next, I will go ahead and click. I'm just going to click save settings. Why? No, I don't know. I'm just going to click it. Uh, then we are going to close connection. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect this again and just take a gander at that and see if anything looks different. Okay, it still shows pretty much the exact same. Let's go ahead and try it. It may not have loaded the firmware because this little thing is here didn't change. But let's find out, shall we? We will find out together. Okay, close connection. <clears throat> We're going to unplug this. Plug this back into there. Uh, there is no motor plugged in yet, so I'm going to go ahead and plug a motor in. The motor you will plug in with your little nubbin on the connector facing up and just shove it in one side or the other of your three-prong brushless connector. Okay, it did actually change to brushed. So as you can see now, when I give it a little throttle, the motor starts moving. I don't know if you can see that. You can probably see it moving. You can definitely hear it because we're running Mod 5 gears. And they are a little noisier than Mod 3. So this has now been changed to a brushed motor setting. And you can see it works forwards, backwards. And that's pretty much all you need to do to change it to brushed. Um, you can go in here in these settings in here after you're connected again. And you can move those things around and see what you can get it to tune to, um, to each their own with preferences. But uh, like I said, in a later video, we'll probably do that um, just to see what we can find, if we can find a really good tune for certain motors or whatever. But for now, that's it. Uh, if you need to go back to brush lists after you've gone to brush, you will have to go back and do everything we just did, but changing the firmware to the brushless firmware now. Um, I don't recommend that you go back and forth all the time with it because there is always the chance when loading or unloading firmwares you can mess something up. So try to leave it alone once programmed to brushed um, or if you are running a brushless motor on it don't just carelessly go back and forth between the two. Maybe just buy another ESC, keep one for brushless, one for brushed. That way you're not constantly changing all these settings and plugging things in and unplugging them and loading and unloading firmwares. Every time you mess with the firmwares in there, there's a slight chance you can mess something up or do something wrong. So maybe just buy a second one if you're going to have a brushed and a brushless setup ESC. Now if you just so happen to, oh, I don't know, lose your downloads or you need them on another computer, and you're not quite sure how to get them on another computer, I have my website here pulled up, mofoRC.com. You can go in here, and right here there is a search bar at the top of the website. Let's go ahead and delete that. Right at the top of the website, there is a search bar. Okay, we go up here, boom, a little icon that looks like a magnifying glass. This is real handy when you're looking for anything on the website. So we're gonna punch in, uh, we're gonna punch in Rock Wolf. And here you have your Rockwolf ESC. Here you have your Rockwolf ESC config tool program and firmware for Mofo Brushless 32-bit ESC. We click on that. It pulls up this right here. You see the price is 0, $0.00, .00 US dollars. If you add that to cart and you view your cart and you check out, it does not charge you a dime. Uh, you put in your email or log into your account. Uh, your order is free. No payment is required. 
punch in all your stuff. The one really important step here you will need to make sure you do is make sure you do have your correct email or it will send it to somebody else. Uh, go ahead and hit check out. When you check out, it will not immediately send you the actual stuff here. It's not going to immediately send you the software. Um, we will have to go into our website on the back end of the, the website and we will have to hit the fulfill button for you. When we hit fulfill, it will send you that. So uh, just bear in mind, if you ordered it at like 1 a.m. in the morning or 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., we may not see it right away. Um, so maybe try not to wait last minute to do it. Try to do it earlier in the day. The earlier in the day, the better chance that we're going to see it. That will do the exact same thing we showed you earlier. It's going to send you the folder that you have to uncompress here. Uh, it will also send you the two downloaded ESC firmwares here that are going to be somewhere in your little spot here that says downloads probably. And you'll have to search through your downloads to find wherever it is at. So that being said, um, I think we're done. I think uh, if there's any other questions, comments, whatever, go ahead and put them down in the little comments section. And uh, if you have any other questions or if you're having issues or anything like that, uh, feel free to hit up the website, send us an email. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Or you can go through Facebook, send us a message through Facebook, through the MoFORC page as well. Thank you for watching today, and I hope this helps anybody um, interested in or anybody dealing with programming one of these right now or anything like that. Hopefully that has answered enough questions um, that you may come across while programming this or attempting to program it or deciding if you need to program it.